the number one team of the country, Kentucky, and number 25, Mississippi State. Sean McDonald with Bill Raftery. Happy to have you with us. Kentucky has dominated this league throughout the regular season and its first two games in this tournament. Tough task in this one, Bill, for Mississippi State. Uh, they got to be concerned with the full court pressure of Kentucky. If they beat the timeline, get it to the big guy, Dampier, down low. Let him dominate a little bit. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for this SEC championship game for Mississippi State. Dante Jones, Russell Walters, Eric Dampier, Marcus Bullard, the point guard, Daryl Wilson, his backcourt mate, and for the balanced Kentucky Wildcats, Walter McCarty, with Antoine Walker, Derek Anderson, Anthony Epps, and Tony Dell. John Clogarty is our lead official, working with Andre Cotillo and Curtis Shaw, Kentucky dressed in white. 16-0 in the regular season in the SEC. Two easy wins here in the tournament. And it's Mississippi State in control of the tip. In Kentucky, Sean McDonough, man to man. And they will help out on the big guy down low. Give him that one. Big guy, Eric Dampier, powers to the bucket. And that is shot blocked by Walker. Out of bounds, last touch by Dampier. And Kentucky in possession for the first time. And Walker has been the main man through the first two victories in this tournament for Kentucky. And he was the MVP of this tournament a year ago as a freshman. Keeps getting better. Mississippi State man to man. Uh, Dampier, you notice they hugged him down the other end. A lot of motion, a lot of activity. Very unselfish Kentucky team. There, Gay Anderson. This the fall away. And Dampier, the rebound. He averages nine and a half rebounds per game. And they've got to be solid on defensive rebound, Mississippi State. Terrific offensive rebounding team, Kentucky. Nearly a minute played, no score. And there's the double. Darrell Wilson. There is a three, and they need that today. You wish you had a putting stroke as pure as that. <laughs> he is delightful in the open. And the counter. And a three missed by Delt. And a travel call against Antoine Walker. Oh, uh, there's that offensive rebounding on the three. It's very difficult, but they're organized in their press now. Richard Williams, biggest concern. Bullard had four turnovers. Straight up man-to-man -man full by Kentucky. In the last encounter, he had four. Richard Williams in his 10th season as head coach of his alma mater, Mississippi State. Bullard out of control with a wild one-hander. And McCarty brings it back for the Cats, who trail three to nothing, more than a minute and a half into the game. Walker, well short. And Darrell Wilson ripped it out of the pile. And then he ran into Delk, who took it away. McCarty fouled by Russell Walters. Well, the first foul on either team. A little while, which is suggests to the open floor. Uh, Patino likes the frenzy pace, even though Mississippi State is running. It favors Kentucky. You know, the seventh season as Kentucky head coach, his overall record, which is stints at Boston University and Providence College. Never lost a game as a coach in this tournament. Kentucky is trying to win this for the fifth straight year. McCarty makes the free throw. And in Patino's first two seasons at Kentucky, they were on probation. They were not eligible to play in the SEC tournament. So he is perfect, 14 and 0 in SEC tournament game. And he's here, rebounded the miss. He sort of diffused the notion that he was a traveling man uh, there yes. seven years. Incredible job with this program. There's the pressure, forced the big guys to make decisions. And the finish with authority by Dante Jones. Send it in with a double clutch. It's an old dodge. 5-1, Mississippi State. Kentucky comes in having won 27 in a row. They're 28-1 overall, their only loss in the Grade 8 tournament in Pontiac, Michigan on November 29 to University of Massachusetts. Delft leaned in and missed it, and Jones brings it back. Now, Mississippi State's got to be careful. Don't get in an open floor. Be sound. Dump it to the big guy. He's got to find the open man. Oh, great reaction. Anderson. He found an open man. Unfortunately for him, it was Derek Anderson, and Epps missed a three. Kentucky cold right off the start. And one thing, too, with Kentucky, the post up of the guards. Dealt real solid down there, plus a good offensive rebounder. Wildcats 0 for 5 from the floor. Nice cut by Jones. Quickly, they come to defend Jones, and he missed a tough follow-away shot, rebounded by Epps. And he had a pass to Dampier. He didn't get it to him. Dell ran into difficulty. 
McCarty the fade away. They still can't get a field goal. They do on the follow by Antoine Walker. The foot speed, it's incredible how the offensive rebound run for the ball quicker than the opponent. Yes, at the beginning of the game, the Mississippi State here has had a chance to push to a decent sized lead, but they're not taking advantage of the slow start by Kentucky. And McCarty will go to the line with a chance to tie the game. Uh, Dante Jones mad, but that's what uh, Kentucky does. They chart deflections. They're very active from behind. Remind you a little of Iverson with the ability to stick that hand in and go the other way with the break. McCarty once again at the free throw line. This is a senior from Evansville, Indiana. Kentucky, an easy road to the championship game through this tournament as the number one seed out of the Eastern Division. A 24-point win over Florida in the quarterfinals. And a 20-point win yesterday. Mississippi State has also had a relatively easy time of it in victories over Auburn and Georgia. 5-5 the score. Nearly four minutes played here in New Orleans in this reconfigured basketball arrangement in this building. About 24,000 in attendance. Good job by Dell getting over to help even on the bigger Dampier. Dampier missed from in close. McCarty knocks in a three and a whistle under the basket. The goal will count. That's foul against Kentucky. The push down the floor with the dribble and your center at six foot ten. And I mentioned to Rick Pitino yesterday, Walter McCarty is going to end up being a small forward in the NBA. Now, he didn't quite agree with me, which is natural. But he did say there is a possibility. He's broadened his game to deliver from deep. Difficult to muscle up against power forwards in the NBA, although he has added a lot of weight since he got to Kentucky. Not exactly a bruiser and banger. He's at 230 pounds now. He had a special diet. I look at the help now by Walker. And Pierre missed everything. Walter stripped by Anderson. And the ball will be played in by Mississippi State when we come back. 8-5 Wildcats early. The Kentucky Wildcats 8. The undefeated team in SEC regular season play in 40 years since Alabama went through the conference slate undefeated in 1956. Average margin of victory for the year, 23.4 points. They lead the nation in scoring margin, and it's a balanced attack, as we saw, nine players averaging more than 10 minutes per game if you counted Jared Prickett, who was injured after five games, it'd be 10. And now that tells me even you might see some time if you were on that bench. What do you think? A nice little post up, but the important thing is how he's handled the egos. Yes. So you let everybody get time and give of oneself. Bullard. Short of it, tipped out by Walker to the corner where it was run down by Dell. The quick hitter, though. You gotta be ready. Punished with the dribble, kick back. Delt buries a three. Relentless. They complement their defensive thrust. Here's it, uh, Dante Jones. Fortunate to get it back. That, see, Dante's got the great ability to blame the other guys. You ever know <laughs> that? You know, he's smart, though. With the camera on those that fall. But Dante's got to be careful with the pass inbounds. The fronting of the offensive team makes it very difficult. Look who they have bail out. Now, this isn't a bad throw to your camp here. Unfortunately, he can't dribble it. Wilson can, and he's conscious of Anderson's presence behind him. 10-0 run over the last three minutes since Kentucky fell behind 5-1 to one to start the game. We're talking about spurt teams, and they just shut you out. Russell Walters, not much of an offensive threat. And an offensive foul called away from the ball against Derek Dampier, and that's his first foul. Venting frustration. He was mad at Jones earlier. He had a nice pass. Passing lane didn't get the basketball. That time they didn't get it down to him. Eleven five Kentucky. Don't see it off on Wilson down there. He's got to be careful. Very active freewheeling. Anderson short from three-point range. Jones is ahead of the field. Dampier found him for the dunk. And what a great reaction by the big fella. The kick-out pass. Some guards aren't that alert. 
Mississippi State comes in having won 10 of its last 12. Big reason they've improved as the season has gone along. The play of Dante Jones, and that was a block by Dampier. Great reaction. We saw him do that yesterday. Here he is. They got him locked. Get it to him. And McCarty fouled him as he tried to step around and intercept the pass. First foul on Walter McCarty. Did you see the amount of guys that came around? Kentucky them? three Kentucky people, but right here, his reaction doesn't really get a body, but wards off with the distance, and right away the reaction, and Dante Jones, who was posing on jams yesterday, hand behind the head, a little Rembrandt look. <laughs> He's got it all. Sniffing around down there, you see Walker looking to help McCarty. As the post up occurs. See the two of them, Sean? Mm -hmm. Nice help. And Walker stepped right in front of Dampier. Anderson got tangled up with Daryl Wilson. Wilson went down. Anderson just stumbled a bit. And out of bounds is Bullard. She came up with a free ball on the baseline. And Kentucky plays it in, leading by four. Wayne Turner is into the game, wearing number five, Ron Mercer, and Mark Pope also coming in. Well, Sean, it makes it easier when you've got help down there, and that's just good attention to detail. This Kentucky team, what's forgotten as the slasher, Derek Anderson, ends up missing that one, is how good they are half court defensively, as Dunk snakes in. And he scored off the inbound play. Tony Delt gives Kentucky a six-point lead, 13-20, remaining in the first half. Regardless of the outcome of this game, certain it would seem that Kentucky will be a number one seed in the mm -hmm. upcoming NCAA tournament. Richard Williams feels his team has been improving its seed with its performance over the last part of the year in this tournament. Mm -hmm. Uh, this particular game important for him to step up as Mercer gets to Nickel Dimer and like Antoine Walker, the nurturing by Rick Pitino of this great talent. He's coming along, showed some things yesterday. Near the conclusion of today's game, Bill and I will select a genuine Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed almost five and a half million dollars to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. And Sean, you notice the zone now against Vanderbilt earlier this year. Patino played all half court defense. I don't know whether it was to prove how good they were or to teach them how to play a little bit better. So I mean, it's not just the full pressure, they can map both ends. Uh, Dave Jones locks in a three. And he has seven of the ten Mississippi State points. There's a reversal. Ed Hunt both with the screen. This is where he can be tough against a guy like that there with the bounce. Turner, freshman point guard, handed off to Mercer, another talented freshman who missed the shot. Rebounded by Wilson. Great pass to Jones. Uh, leaking out. He's got quick feet and he's got a lot of emotion. Get those easy baskets. Key against Kentucky. They make you work so hard. Twice now we've seen this ability to leak out. And he does play with some emotion. And do you remember the game we had when uh, I called Quinn Buckner and said, you know, this guy, a lot of people don't know about how he had a dreadful game. Well, Quinn, please absolve me. These are his points. Turnaround, the end of the season. We mentioned the big reason the Bulldogs were playing their best basketball over the last half of the season, the much improved play of Dante Jones. Mississippi State comes in at 21 and 7 overall, having won 10 of their last 12. They were the winners of the Western Division of the Southeastern Conference during the regular season. Their first right, first outright league or division title since 1962-63. And they go 2-3 and hit the high man here, Kentucky. Walker and air ball along the baseline. Mississippi State with a chance to reclaim the lead. Easy now, Dante. Don't get carried away. Yep. Nice. <laughs> Release. Play within yourself. Dante Jones has 11. Mississippi State has the lead. Will that count? Acrobatic shot. Score it, says Curtis Shaw. He said, did that go in? Amazing what Tony Delk can do. Everybody takes three-point shot Well, he can dribble to ecstasy and here before tiptoe on the floor an uncanny release and a chance for three. Physically imposing for a little guy. Delk, the SEC Player of the Year. As selected by both the coaches and the media. And he 
completes the three-point play. He has eight points. And Kentucky has the lead again by two. Back to New Orleans in a moment. This is an exclusive coverage of the NCAA basketball tournament. We'll coverage of all the games up to and including the final four. And the first tip is set for 12.15 Eastern time on Thursday afternoon exclusively on CBS Sports. What do you think of uh, Kansas in that situation? Well, I Lots think they play with, huh? might have cost themselves the number one seed with that loss prior and, to our game. And you, did you say you like Purdue or Cincy to move up? Tough to tell. <laughs> I think uh, Purdue lost last night, right? And uh, Cincinnati won. He's a good opponent, Marquette, to win its conference championship. Texas Tech will get uh, power yeah, yeah, and all that. I, I, I know, but you go on, on the field of regular season. Great run by James Dickey. Kentucky with a two-point lead. Dante Jones almost single-handedly keeping Mississippi State close with 11 of the 14 Bulldog points. Now Delk settles on his senior from Brownsville, Tennessee. Seventh all-time leading score in Kentucky. Today's game leading nine to catch Cotton Mash to sixth place. Dampier another rebound. He has been solid. Has five boards already. Daryl Wilson in the traffic. And Jones got a hand on the rebound, but couldn't knock it back into the bucket. McCarty called for a charge as he crashed into Whit Hughes, who has just come off the MSU bench. A little nickel dimer, huh? Some theatrics. He got Rick Pitino up and active, but that is amazing the way they run the floor. McCarty at the Ended up great sprint. Mercer's the guy that made the pass. Their big guys can do what their little guys do. That's why they post the little guys up on occasion and gives the big guys the opportunity to dump down with good vision. Wilson, long one, picked off by Jeff Shepard. The right idea, just didn't have enough on the pass. Then Dampier got a hand of the ball and stripped Shepard. This is Kentucky style, though, up tempo. And remember, late in the game, they're stronger because they sub so much. Dan Pierre blocked by Pope. And a whistle for a foul against Mississippi State. And that advantage really magnified in the conference tournament situation. Playing for the third straight game, uh, third straight day. And they are not a deep team at all. Really seven or eight men deep, and that's it there. Five starters average at least 26 minutes per game each, while Kentucky has only one player who averages more than 26 minutes a game. And John, the big thing is Dan Pierce, if you're running up and down, he's not going to get involved. I think he can be a factor. Nice defensive play by Jones. The previous foul was on Hughes, his first. Now, if you're in a hurry, you forget Dan Pierce. Now, Jones playing within himself. Solid run during the tournament. Richard Williams said part of his improvement was when Williams put the edict on him, you will not shoot it the first time you touch the ball in a possession regardless. Pass it, and if it comes back to you again, then you have the green light to shoot. I did that amazing. What happens if you have a wide open layup Look, underneath? He, said, he said it was okay oh, if, if that happened. <laughs> and if you make it, it's also okay. Nice pass, Dan Peer to a wide open Hughes, and the Bulldogs are even at 16 apiece. A little Pete Carrell and the sadness in the basketball world. He announced his retirement. A little back cut like Princeton. The head coach retired. A nice little cut by Hughes. A nice way to go into retirement, qualifying with the win over Penn last night. The birth of the NCAA tournament. You don't know how tough it is, Sean. I know you've seen it to play against the coach against Pete Carrell. I mean, they used to make you look silly. A lot of lingerie lingering on the floor when they, they'd step and go without the ball. Your kids would be looking one way. They used to pick people apart. One of the greats in the game. And a foul on Pope underneath as he was getting physical with Dan Pierre. And speaking of Dampier, very unselfish, too. I mean, he really has a good feel for the game. He understands the slip. He, in fact, in the local paper, you're saying, I've got to recognize the double and get it to the correct people. He's been doing that. And in the only loss Kentucky had this year against UMass, Marcus Camby had a huge game. And there were some who said, well, that's the weakness of Kentucky. If they play against a good big man, and they uh, will have a problem. Says that has not been the case since mm -hmm. the Camby game, in large part because they have always doubled the opposing team 
big man if he's a real good player. Well, he, 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 Campillo didn't play well against them down at Mississippi State, but Jones right now is the guy that's just knocking them dead. He has 13, Walker foul. So his strength is he still man for close to shot. And he'll shoot two. Foul is on Dan Pierre, and that's a concern for Richard Williams as it's the second personal on the junior, Eric Dampier. Well, they say you can get hot, but when you've got that name, you usually add the inferno to it. And right now, hot hands, and they're getting to him, playing in a very nice comfort zone. What do you think? You got the anchor, huh? Dampier with two. Yeah, baby. I would suspect. This early in the game, 8.43 left in the first half. Walker missed the first. And the reason I say that, I mean, Tyrone Washington came in, gave him some good minutes yesterday, and Dampier has the ability to push a little on an offensive rebound. That's where you get a cheap one. One side of the sub, Richard Williams killing might be Bill. They're such serious underdogs here that if they're going to have any chance, they have to keep their best players on the floor as long as they can, regardless. You know, that, that had to be a backcourt. That had to be a violation. He had controlled the dribble. Pope fouled on the way to the bucket. One well, of the Mississippi State players were gesturing. They thought a backcourt violation should have been called against Delk. Now well, you get checked from our end zone look, and uh, they're probably saying he didn't have control, but I think he did on the first he dribble, and then he lost yeah. it. I'm with you. Well, that's a first. No, second or third, maybe, <laughs> but not a first. I'm glad I wasn't with you on Mervis to be though. Pope, everybody knew your name. It's amazing. What's up? <laughs> it's a very unusual place. <laughs> and Richard, not in an unusual place. Uh, people down in Mississippi can start appreciating this guy. Won the West here in the SEC. And you mentioned his success recently. 320 win seasons in the 90s including back-to-back -back with the 20-plus last year and this. This is the second time ever in Mississippi State's been in the conference tournament championship game. The only other time was the first year of the SEC tournament, 1933, and they lost in that game to Kentucky. So they've never won the tournament title. Only the second appearance in the final. And Darrell Wilson knocked that one in from Shreveport. He's anything but double zero. Uncanny from deep, and some pro guys, because of the shooting, are delighted with his play. I mean, the size is a problem for a shooting guard. He's got to work on the ball handling skills. The SEC coaches appreciate Darrell Wilson, his first team all conference this year. Pope follows up the miss by Anderson, and he has four off the bench. Well, if you're a Pope, you're supposed to rise to an occasion as he steps in big time, and he's got Patino's blessing. And Richard Williams wants a 20-second timeout as Bullard gets called for a second foul. He keeps playing like this. He'll be able to buy a TV for he and Shepard. Both of them mentioned into the yearbook. They don't have one. Shepard telling us they couldn't afford it. The cable fee is a little bit too high. So that's why you have teammates. You have teammates <laughs> who have TVs and cable. We don't need to get it in our place. We want to watch something. We'll just go over and visit one of our teammates. And he drew, drew our highest esteem. Uh, the ability to elevate. I mean, here's a pack. 10 player of the year as a freshman rookie of the year i should say and then the position the reaction and that's why all the big guys in concert do so many things solid heads up presence on the defensive end react beautifully for the kentucky wildcats mississippi state hanging in this game despite eight turnovers already in large part because of the play of Dante Jones, 13 points. He's only missed one of seven shots. It's Kentucky by two. 7.42 left in the first half. Sean McDonough with Bill Raftery on this very nerve-wracking day for coaches and players and fans throughout the country awaiting the selection show. And, Bill, I guess that's one of the good things about your coaching career. You never really had to sweat it out on this day because your teams were usually hopelessly gone by well, this time. I was normally with the family at Fort Lauderdale this day <laughs> with Annette Funicella, where the boys are. Every coach you talk about, I heard Gary Williams this morning, uh, the nerve-wracking end of the business is to sit there. Some guys electing to go in their own room, the players in another room, some going to a restaurant together. I mean, it's painful. And, of course, the jubilation, if you do get in, incredible. 
Anderson swatted by Dante Jones, who is making a serious case for himself as this tournament's MVP. He's made 22 out of 30 shots in the two games plus today so far in this tournament. Uh, Kentucky, you know, has to generate things from their defense. Not getting a whole lot out of the full court press, but they've been sound here, particularly helping out on Dampier. It's Jones that's been the problem. Bullard open for a three that gives them the lead. Run their stuff. Don't try and rush it. Beat the press if it's there. Settle and find some people. Mississippi State with a very talented starting five. They're hanging in there early. The question is, can they sustain it against the pressure of Kentucky? Pope made the fade away, and he has six. The Pope is very home at home in this parish. You know, Bill, he's been down from a scoring standpoint lately. He hasn't scored more than six points in a game over the last five games. That comes in the heels of five straight games in which he had been in double figures, and it's Jones at the other end, and he now has 15. Pope and Jones, extraordinary. He can make this deep one, too. Back screen, pop out. Off the dribbler, much better. Well, wild layup that drew no iron. Bullard nearly went out of bounds. Played it back into Hughes. Bullard from way downtown. Wow, wow. You're the point guard. Get control, get him organized. Delt answers with a three. That's that push of the ball, Sean. We watched yesterday. They get all the defense to collapse and kick it back out. Dougie by two. Just under six minutes left in the first half. And Bullard stepped back on the baseline. And it, they're great at spurting, Kentucky, but the spurt ability, the opponent helps them. Marcus with the deep shot led to this particular break. Look at the red shirts. Everybody's retreating to the basket. You don't identify and get out. It's very painful. And then the trap along the baseline caused the turnover. Right in a walker. He was stripped. And uh, it goes over to Mississippi State. Only last touched off the leg of Walker. Well, it's Kentucky by two. Marcus Bullard, the point guard. Richard Williams concedes that he really is miscast. More of a natural two guard. Jones got stuck in the air and was very fortunate on a bad pass that a foul was called underneath. And it's the second foul on Pope. Sort of appropriate that Dante does make a mistake on his passing. Yeah. Not on his shooting. <laughs> Not as well practiced, are you saying? <laughs> it doesn't enter the mind process as readily. Two fouls on Polk and six against Kentucky. The next one will be over the limit. Now you look at Rick, you think of uh, Richard Williams' comments, uh, great thoughts about the ability of Rick. Oh my goodness, Dante. Take his brush away. Saved by Dan Peer, but to Anderson. Jump ball, tipped out of bounds by Bullard. It'll be Kentucky's ball out of bounds. Well, the word Richard Williams kept using yesterday when talking about Rick Pitino was special. So we all like to think we're good coaches. We know X's and O's. We have certain strengths. So, but there are just a couple of guys in the business who his coaches would regard as special. And he thinks Pitino is. There's uh, coaching X's and O's, but also for the way he handles himself. He handles the program, deals with the pressure of his high expectations, deals with the media. He really is the entire package. The word special isn't in the lexicon in my head regarding me. But I've never really heard another coach say such glowing things. Well, the coaches who coached the next time were special. When I left, I was very special. <laughs> they missed me. <laughs> now, we're only allowed two of those a half, aren't we? I think we've reached a limit on Bill as coach. And by the way, for those who are wondering, I've researched it many times in the past. We had a winning record. Yeah at Seton Hall. Obviously, the homes that we played, uh, we counted the alumni games and things of that nature, <laughs> but the top cat here, uh, you mentioned Providence, BU extraordinary as well. That final four team with Billy Donovan and Providence sort of awakened everybody. Chance for Jones, hustling back was Wayne Turner. Jones, a great spin move for the bucket. And along came Jones. What a first half. scored at the other end. Looked like he lost the grip on the ball. Looked like it was rolling down onto his wrist, but he still managed to get it into the bucket. Uh-oh. Jones. Yep, you got it. Jones limps off, and needless to say, that would be an enormous loss to the sidelines for any 
the length of time. Bart Heisch, a freshman, is going to check in. Heck of a little spin move, and right then when he came down, he may have hurt himself at the end, although he did run back. He feels he can do anything. Look at that drop step. Just a gorgeous release at the end. And here's a nice oh, pass God. to Turner. You've got to value the ball, Marcus. Willard threw it right to Wayne Turner as his first point. Now here's Heisch, the freshman from Winfield, Alabama, who has come in with Jones on the bench, apparently with a left ankle injury. They have Jones' shoe off on the bench, and he's limping to the far end of the bench. And Turner, well, that's good defense. He's going to get called for the McCrory's or Woolworth's nickel dimer. His first foul, but what pressure on Heiss, and there, there's the crisis right now. Now Jones comes out of the look by the training staff. And now a 22nd timeout called by Mississippi State. They're down by four. These teams met only once in the regular season. It was at Starkville, much anticipated game early in the year. With both teams riding high. These were the two favorites to win their respective divisions of the SEC. Kentucky really put it on in the final margin of 19 points, but the game wasn't really that close, and uh, took Mississippi State a while to recover from that. It sure has. Uh, you've got to value the ball. One thing is, you know, this will be your homework to finish. At the half coming up, past the George, scores and highlights. Another great day of conference tournament championship game. They'll speculate, undoubtedly, about the upcoming NCAA mm -hmm. tournament. But uh, to finish the thought on Kentucky, you have to make them spend some time in their half court offense. Sean, and that's the key. I mean, make them play a little bit. Don't give the quick hitters. Don't let that explosive nature of them expose themselves. Bart Heisch shooting the one and one. That's his first point. Heisch part of the eight-man rotation. He averages about 11 minutes a game. Playing very small with this lineup right now, Mississippi State. Now a TV timeout. 3.59 left in the first half. The Kentucky Wildcats, 32. The Mississippi State Bulldogs, 30. The end of this on some tape, the ankle. Mississippi State did a great job getting some easy basket. I think that's why I'm worried about the end here. It looks like a turn and then the signal. On the way back up the floor, up and landing awkwardly, taking that shot, he signaled the bench, he wanted to come out, and during these timeouts, the trainer has been working feverishly to retake his left foot, and he does have his shoe back on. Now it looks like they're gonna walk around at the far end of the bench to try to get loose, see if he's able to come back in. He's running behind the Mississippi State bench as we speak. Wayne Turner into Walker. <laughs> Not a bad release if he could have countered. Look at the foot speed to the ball, though, by Walker. Oliver Simmons just into the game, threw it away to Hughes, and goes to try to get it back. Wild scramble, out of bounds, last touched by Anderson. <laughs> He's the great hit, which opens hell up. Terrific Kentucky scrap, scrape, and hustle. And Antoine Walker was really a finesse guy when you look at a three-point penetration. Down and dirty like the rest of them. Once in a while, Marcus needs a little string. A little trouble with that pressure by Anderson. Get Dampier some touches. Wilson the runner. And Mississippi State is even again. Dell. Quick three, followed his shot and kept it alive for Anderson. And so Dampier may foul because he is a little tired. He's been trotting back, not running. I'd go and go at him. Walker passed off to Simmons. And Oliver Simmons played very much. Didn't manage to get into the game late yesterday. He has his first points off the bench. Oliver Green was the 17th time this season. This is the 30th game for Kentucky. Heich, he's been solid off the bench. And what he did nicely, if he went to the basket with every shot block, he stayed away. Anderson totally out of control. Threw it up in the air. He thought he was brushed. He's pleading that case to the officials, and it's falling on deaf ears. 
Jones, meanwhile, still walking around by the Mississippi State bench, but no movement toward coming in. And there's that out-of-control play. Uh, not real happy, but more to himself, I think. You can't go slashing at the goal without something in mind. Do you recall the practice down at Mississippi State? Uh, Richard Williams got all over Dante Jones. He had a terrible game. They get the little slip for the home run, and Dampier, somebody from uh, Kentucky will get a Dampier. <laughs> when Rick Petito finishes with them, you got to get back. That's the first bucket for Dampier. Mississippi State has the lead, despite the fact their first team All-SEC forward has just scored for the first time. Walker, quick shot. And it's run down by Heitch. And with two minutes left in the half, it's Mississippi State by two and a turnover. Double dribble called against Wilson. Unforced, too. Nobody really pressured him. But to finish the thought on Dante, it turned their year around. He played poorly against Alabama, the game that we had. And the rest of the year, looking for others a little bit, being more patient and solid defensively. Here's the post up by Mercer. And he knocks in a nice shot falling away. Mercer being brought along much as Walker was last year. Not thrust into the spotlight immediately. Certainly has the kind of talent to play major minutes at other places, but he didn't want to be that kind of player. He didn't want the pressure to get Kentucky because he knew he'd just blend in. And he's done that very well. Do you think that was the spin doctor? Do you think Rick got him to say those things? things? Well, if, yeah. uh, if he did, uh, Mercer was good at saying them. Uh, he did repeat that. Uh, it's a compliment to Rick. He gets guys to believe in winning. The ball moving along the perimeter, and Bullard capitalizes by making a three. He has six. Mississippi State leads by three. That is equal distribution offense. You know, that's what they should be doing, I think. Go and step, nice step through against Dampier. Walker missed the tip, his third try, deflected by Dampier. And the Bulldogs look tired. They just couldn't get off the floor to go up and get it. Walker still missing. And a foul on the rebound action on Kentucky. I believe it's on Mercer. I think he got it right, Sean. We mentioned earlier the small lineup. They finally come in with Walters. They've been playing with guys our size, so you know you're not going to dominate on the glass. Also, physically tasking as you check out, you're reaching, you expend a lot of energy, and that's why they're so tough in the second. They're like a heavyweight fight. They can go to distance, Kentucky. Keep coming at you with numbers. Great confidence in their system. Well, Massachusetts beat Kentucky with a team that is not very deep, mm -hmm. but that was early in the year. There you go. And uh, this is the third game in three days for a not very deep Mississippi State team. Dan Pierce has gone out of the game. Good substitution. I think so. so I, I thought they uh, gambled a little too long with him. And Dante being held out as well. Jones with the ankle problem. Not a big team. You mentioned not a deep team. Aaron Wilson is nine. He's the leading scorer for Mississippi State for the year, averaging 17.9 per game. He made both. And this is the largest lead for Mississippi State. Five points under a minute left till halftime. Epps guarded by Heisch. Walker now guarded by Walters, and he tipped in his own miss. Was that quick elevation? <laughs> That's World Trade Center elevation. You get up there to the top quickly. Dogs can hold for the final shot. The shot clock is off. Bowling's got to create a little bit here. Notice the difficulty with the bounce for him, Wilson. Walters scores inside time for Kentucky if they hurry. Heiss a steal and a miss just prior to the buzzer. Whoa, that one hit the rim from about 85 feet away. Even though it's halftime, it still qualifies as a major surprise the way Kentucky has been blowing people away. At the end of the first half, Mississippi State leads by five. Pat O'Brien will be along from New York with Penzo at the half after this message and a word from your local station. Championship Mississippi State leads by five, and our coverage of the SEC Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Here, historical feature of this Great city, New Orleans, Louisiana. 
site of the SEC championship game. A big surprise at halftime as Mississippi State leads by five. As Pat O'Brien told you, the only other team to lead Kentucky at the half this season was Georgia Tech, and they got wiped out in the second half. What about Mississippi State's chances of hanging in the full 40 today? Well, I think the big thing is stop Kentucky from offensive rebounding. That, that's got to uh, be stopped. The other thing is handling the basketball, how they cope with the pressure. Make sure they walk it up slowly so they don't get the traps. Get it over half court and let Jones take over a little and pound it down to Dampier. Mississippi State shot the ball very well in building this five-point lead while Kentucky did not. They took advantage of fast break opportunities to score 14 points on fast breaks. Dante Jones was sensational for leaving the game with 422 left in the half with a foot injury. And while he was out of the game, Mississippi State had a seven-point edge in play. As you can see, Dante's back in to begin the second half. Our report from the Mississippi State dressing room is that he was kicked above the ankle on that layup in the first half. And in that spot above his ankle, he previously had a stress fracture. He has pain, but no new injury. It's just a matter of whether or not he'll be able to play with the pain. He was retaped again at halftime. So Jones is in to begin the second half. Pope shut off by Dampier. They go right back to Pope. And get that third foul on Dampier if they can. And... Are they going to three second? They gave that almost a legal D from the NBA signal. But... Hope. A nice play by Epps, too. He's got to become a little more of a factor for Kentucky. Get the ball inside. That nice little reset by him. Jones led all scores in the first half with 17 points. Delk led Kentucky with 11. Three of 11 shooting in the first half. Great design of that play to Dampier, but he dropped the lob that was right on the money by Bullard. And Marcus Bullard look, turned towards the backcourt. He thought he had a alley-oop connection with Dampier. And pretty good aggressive Kentucky follow by Earth. A great way that would have been for him the second half. Keep their crowd in it. Didn't you feel he was fatigued late in that first yes. half? So will be the key. Can they hang in there for the remaining 19 and a half minutes? Jones, a three. Nothing wrong with his foot on that shot. Uh, he squared up beautifully, pushed off. And the handling of the double has been very intelligent by Eric Dampier. Hasn't forced anything and found the open guy. Delp, quick catch and shoot. It spins out. Not much going Kentucky's way at the moment. And only two other games this year did Kentucky trail in the second half. Only once. Did they trail at halftime? That was Georgia Tech. They came back and won by 23. Obviously, they trailed UMass in the second half of their only loss. They also trailed Arkansas in the second half. So they're not used to being behind at this point of the game. Jones, another three, and he high steps and leaps. I don't think there's anything wrong with his No, play. I don't think. He looked like Ira Davis, the hop, step, and jump Olympian of years ago. But open looks and all of a sudden diffusing the hustling, scrambling. And the guard coming out on him, and this is what you noted. Legs good, a fresh little 20 to invigorate, but he does emote out there. And a 20-second timeout called by Kentucky. Mississippi State by 11, with 18.39 remaining. As we count down to the selection show, here on CBS, your first look at the brackets at 6.30 Eastern Time. The selection show sponsored by Pizza Hut. Comes your way from just outside Kansas City. And Mississippi State might be improving its seed. We said earlier there would certainly be no reason to believe Kentucky would be less than number one seed, regardless of what happens in this game. There are other critical games played today. Still underway in the Big West. Delk backed in and passed off to Mercer. Delk in the traffic. And Beer might have gotten a piece of it. I think you're right. He's running the floor as well. He juggled, therefore, traveling did not be called. He can't walk unless you have possession. Walters off the backboard. And give the assist to Dampier. He dragged the two double up guys, Shepard included, to the corner, and then the nice cut to the box by Walters. He can swing. Oh, wow, 
Russell Walters' big country because he was a veteran for country music. He's recording a country album. Can you buy one? Uh, make an edit for me. Russell fouled him. And the Cardi fouled by Walters. Running the floor, we noted. And you said also, Mississippi State didn't come out too early from halftime. No. I mean, Dampier's showing rest here. And now you drag the two, and right away, the fill at the box, and you got the middle weak side covered by Dante Jones. Well executed plan. And Richard Williams uh, just not having much time to prepare for this Kentucky club, but I'm sure they looked at tape of their game. Free throws by McCarty, the first points for Kentucky here in the second half. They come two minutes and 16 seconds in. And State leads by 11. Again, the home run pass. Wilson blocked by Shepard. Good hustle by Jones to follow the play, and he scored off glass. Oh, come on. He had to go to early services. A little hang in the kiss release. A little clutch as well. Dante Jones has 25. Pope for three. It rattled out to Bullard. Mississippi State leads by 13 with the ball. You just tuned in. You're hearing correctly. Kentucky trails by 13 in the second half. And going 16 and 0 in the regular season, only one conference opponent lost by single digits. Georgia lost by five. Every other game for Kentucky in conference this year has been a double-digit victory. And look at this slip to the post there as Walters went to the box. Here's the double. It's how you move your guys. Now he drags. They don't get the reversal. Walters, just as the shot clock was expiring. Terrific trip for the Bulldogs. And they push the lead to 15, their largest lead. Dell leaned in, didn't get a call, and Jones rebounded. Interesting, Bill, the dynamics in the arena. You might expect at a conference tournament, one team a big underdog, the crowd would jump onto their side. But so many of the tickets here bought by Kentucky fans, they really have about 75% of their own people in the seats. And I think some of the schools left sold to other Kentucky people as well. But the half-court offense right here will screen across. Tough shot. Oh, my goodness. Oh, what did you have this morning? Well, there'll be other guys trying to hurt their feet during this timeout. Timeout, Kentucky. Don't celebrate too early. Jones has 27, and the Bulldogs lead by 17. Clint Buckner was talking about close games. As you see the score there, I don't think he had this in mind. These days at Indiana, some close ones important, but here's the fill by Dante and the ability to spread and release. I mean, he is just scintillating right now with those numbers. Unbelievable. 27 points for 16.02 remaining, already a career high, passing by five, the 22 he put on the board at Auburn earlier this year. On a 21 to four run, dating back to a minute 10 left in the first half. Kentucky trailed by 19 in the second half against UMass, came back to make it a tight one at the very end. You got to score to set up that pressure. They haven't been able to knock him down. Anderson, strong along the baseline. Now Allen Edwards blocked by Dampier. A presence, and he gets out. Boy, he is charged up down the floor for the low box here. Dampier muscled in, his shot was short, but he tipped it back to Jones. Jones has it spin out to Walker. And Wilson going for the steal, foul Shepard. That's just the second foul of this half against Mississippi State in the first of the game on Wilson. Uh, Dan Beer couldn't finish that little play. I mean, energy to run the floor, but not the strength. But on this end, he has been there when needed, negating opportunities, some hurries, some changes, a dominating force. Alan Edwards. Now Antoine Walker. Oof, tough shot, running left shot with the right hand. And it's 57-42. Mississippi State leads by 15 with 15 remaining. And Sean, there's the look now. So you make it tough. They haven't been able to force the speed dribble. So Kentucky stays man-to-man. -man. They get the turnover on the sideline. Bullard stepped on the line in front of the Kentucky bench. 12th turnover committed by Richard Williams Bulldogs. 
Turnovers 12 to 9. Shepard with Anderson, Pope, Edwards, and Walker on the floor for Kentucky. Uh, Pope, uh, they were trying to run a pick and roll, but Pope's not the guy to handle the bounce. And Walker shot well short. And Bullard not afraid to push. Wilson for three. Uh oh, counter just like Kentucky does. Push you with the dribble. Everybody collapses to step in three. Mississippi State shooting a blistering pace here in the second half. Anderson wanted to hoist a quick three. Edwards had a seam and laid it in. And Jeff Beer may have gotten away with one. They don't need it now. Bullard fortunate that that came back to him as Shepard blocked the original pass. Questionable judgment, would yeah. you say? And as the Richard Williams said yesterday, you have to make great decisions when you play this game. You know when to push it, when to pull it out, when to shoot, when to pass. Shoot when you get it if you're Wilson. He's on fire at the moment. Oh, they didn't really. They should have switched out. Anderson tried to trail over the top of the screen. And Tyrone Washington on the sideline coming in for Dampier is a little bit out of gas. Anderson tried to answer a three and missed. And a foul on the follow. Walters hit Pope. Pope will shoot two. Unbelievable. Incredible. Mississippi State by 19 in the second half. We spoke with Richard Williams yesterday. He said he felt there were teams in the country that in a single game, if they played a very good game and Kentucky had not they, they could beat Kentucky. But if any team tried to play them three games out of five, four out of seven, you'd never win a series against Kentucky. This team is having one of those games. Well, the jump shot that is open there, you see Kentucky's reaction isn't what it should be, helping out doing some of those things. But it's just like Georgia Mississippi yesterday. Mississippi State, same kind of a game. All of a sudden, started making those shots, started putting some pressure on people. Kentucky has to rush a little bit more on offense, not having the counters that they're used to. Tino's team not having a good day. Mississippi State having a great day. As Richard Williams says, that's really what it takes when you play against the Wildcats. With their ability to score quickly, a long way to go. Be premature and then some to count the Cats out. And Richard Williams knows that. Big thing is the press. I mean, they've been able to cope with it. Been solid. Kentucky's had a tough time scoring here in the second half to set it up. And only scored eight points in this half. In better than six and a half minutes. Now, see how they, they speed and back it off so it eliminates the double. Drag everybody else down the floor. Been very solid. Big part of the improvement of Mississippi State as the year has progressed as well. The improvement of Bullard, as mentioned earlier, not a natural point guard, really a two guard. He had a lot of trouble handling the ball and making decisions early in the year. He's gotten much better in that regard as the season's gone along. Well, they were spo spoiled by T.J. Honore last year. And the runner for Wilson didn't get the bounce. Rebounded and put back in by Tyrone Washington just off the bench. Jones back on the bench as you saw it, grabbing at that left foot again. A little kick on the entry pass. Everything Richard Williams has done has turned out beautifully for him. And Dave Beer getting it. A useful opportunity to inhale over there on the sideline. And you get some plus points from Washington, you're in business. State by 19. Delft. This pass deflected by Hughes to Washington. Down to 12 and a half minutes remaining. The last SEC team to beat Kentucky was Mississippi State. February of 1995, the game had rough arena. He calls timeout. How about this? Heads up play, they switch it to a 20, I believe. Rick Patino thought it should have been a travel on Washington as he rolled over and then called timeout. He's not going to convince the trio officials. Well, you, if you're catching it in the air and then roll to the floor, it's legal. Watch this now. And advantage or momentum? I think momentum took him. I'd be begging to. Yes. Coming up on the road to the Final Four, Pat O'Brien, Clint Buckner, George Rambling, all the latest news on the NCAA tournament. 
and following your local news. Well, we mentioned that win last season at Kentucky by Mississippi State. Rich Williams as well. Last year we had a team that was really better at handling mm -hmm. the ball and making decisions. They're not as good in those areas this year. And they don't, I believe they played a lot of 2-3 zone last year in that game. Right? It's hard to call. Five-point win last February at Lexington. The last time Kentucky lost to an SEC foe. Now, you notice how easily they're getting the ball into the three-second lane? That time to poke the difference in Dampier and Washington. Dampier experience, a little more physical. Dampier, catching his breath. Jones back in after grabbing at his foot on the bench a moment ago. Pope makes the first. 14 fouls called against Mississippi State. Here in the second half, Kentucky still has not been called for a foul in eight minutes and eight seconds. You know what's going through my mind? The LSU game, when LSU was up, and they came roaring back. I mean, this is a team that can score quickly. That was last year, LSU blew a 31-point lead. This year against LSU, Kentucky scored 86 points and a half. McCarty banks it in. And the Cats are within 16. And the harsh kiss delivery, and now it gets their press ready. Oh, my goodness. Anderson, down for three. Drew no iron with that shot. Hughes, and a held ball as Anderson reached in. And with the arrow, it stays with Kentucky. CBS Sports coverage of the SEC Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. 16 with 11.22 remaining here in New Orleans with Bill Rafter and Sean McDonough. As we mentioned, the last loss for Kentucky against an SEC opponent was to Mississippi State at Rupp Arena, February 14th of 1995. A five-point win for the Bulldogs. Since then, Kentucky's won 26 games in a row against teams from this conference. You got to think with the pressing ability, the bench depth, a real concern for Richard Williams, who went after Darrell Wilson on that timeout because of the turnover. So maybe a little unraveling. Delk passed off to McCarty. Strong drive and a block called by Hughes. And it's two fouls on Hughes. William sets it, the momentum has shifted. And his team shooting unbelievably well in this tournament. They shot 60% for the game yesterday against Georgia. And 60% here in the second half after a 55% first half today. Now he couldn't have asked for a better situation. He had Jones and Dampier resting. Time out, collectively get them organized, put the two big guys back in, let them get some opportunities to touch the ball. But handling the pressure, Kentucky forces it in the bigger guys' hands to make mistakes. In less than a minute, the lead has gone from 19 to 14. And here they got a perfect spot now. Dampier needs to get out of that corner. Pollard nearly charged in a pulp. Now they need to get it over mid court. 10 seconds, the call. Great step through, too, by Bullard, but a little bit too late. Well, all of a sudden, the house turns blue as the pressure, the force of that maneuver to get Dampier to touch the basketball deep in the backcourt work. Most of the people in this arena wearing blue. It is a partisan Kentucky crowd. And... Now the whistle is starting to come more regularly, and it's Hughes, I believe, called for a foul. Down there with Anderson trying to post up. Well, Richard Williams might start to get on the officials about the fact that team fouls are six to nothing. Usually coaches pick up on the disparity yeah. in the fouls call. One thing they can count, not a good look here by Pope. Threw it right to Bullard. Break the Bulldogs needed with the momentum turning. And Dampier dropped the handoff. Here comes Epps. A pull up for three. And McCarty over the back on the rebound action. That's the first foul this half on Kentucky. It comes 
nine minutes and 14 seconds into the half, and it's number three on Walter. Now, I know you played in the old school as I did. You would never pull up and take the three, but the philosophy is you can shoot it, you make it, you got your big guy crashing. McCarty, unfortunately, and they get the home run look again. It worked earlier. Dampier! And the Kentuckians felt he traveled. Now, there's no way that should happen with McCarty guarding him. He's got better foot speed. It's four points for Dampier. 16-point game, 10 and a half remaining. Mississippi State trying to pull off a major upset. Anderson knocks it in. On a simple screen down by Pope. Four points for Derek Anderson. Transfer from Ohio State in his first year of playing in Kentucky. Mississippi State's got to run their stuff. Eventually let Dampier, you know you can predict once they get it to him, there's going to be a double. 14-point lead for the Bulldogs. They run time off the shot clock. And they get the push by Pope. They ran a screen for an alley-oop for Dampier. Pope called for the foul. His third. Well, it's a long way from Starkville to New Orleans. And when you take steps like that, it's a short trip. The crowd thought it was a travel. Epps out of the game. Fresh 35 on the shot clock. Exactly midway through the second half now. Mississippi State leads by 14. They're up five at halftime. Led by as many as 19. And Pope's got to be ready. Playing Dampier down there. Bullard! Explode to the bucket and then missed an open layup. Delt. Pope for three. Jones high in traffic, had the rebound, and then he was fouled. So much for a foot problem. Elevating with the best of them. And that was an important rebound, and he went after it. Anderson called for a second, just as quickly as the fouls. Was six to nothing this half, now they're six to three. Jones playing with the injured foot. Jones right away gets rid of it. Smart. That's what Dampier didn't do. It's been 11 years since a team other than Kentucky or Alabama has won the SEC tournament. The last school other than Kentucky or Alabama to win it. Auburn back in 1985. And Chuck Person led them as the number eight seed for the SEC tournament title. This one they hit high and they try and high low. Nice little play. Simmons. Just a little bit of a disadvantage size wide. Well executed. Foul on Simmons, his first. And the fourth very quickly on Kentucky. Number 41, Mark Pope, number 40, Walter McCarty. Here's the big fella. They they just slip him in as they pop from the elbow to the high post, Jones, and he just wanted to get to the line. Simmons at the disadvantage. Bullard goes out of the game. Replaced by Heif and Pierce. Averages 15 points and nine and a half rebounds, held the four points today. A lot of talk this season that he might decide into the draft at the end of this year as a junior. Those who watch him know that his offensive game could use improvement. Starting Thursday, the madness begins. CBS kicks off its exclusive coverage of the NCAA tournament. Coverage of all games, including the Final Four. First tip time, 12.15 Eastern Thursday afternoon, exclusively here on CBS. Now, we all talk about playing a big guy in Kentucky. Kate Mike's offensive rebound by Jones. Jones was fouled. He has been some force emotionally and with the numbers. Talking about the big guy, offensively, he said, well, they've had trouble with the big guy. I just think defensively, they don't have a guy as Jones slips in. And they both squeeze, but good elevation once again. But to finish this, what Dampier defensively didn't have a guy that was banging him, getting fouls on him. He was a little more perimeter. He had to come out a little bit on Walker. So that's to their advantage, Mississippi State. And to the disadvantage of Rick Pitino's guys. Rebound hit the floor. Shepard corralled it. It was Shepard who committed the last foul. And State still leads by 15 with nine minutes left. And Dampier blocked the jam attempt by Shepard. A nice clear out. That's a set play out of the half court offense. But somebody's got to present a passing lane for him. Third block by Dampier. Heisch in for Bullard. 
looking for help. Jones juggled. That's a three-point try. Rebound Heisch. They didn't need a quick shot, but they'll take it if he makes it. Oh. They had a fresh 35 on the clock when he got the rebound, but he was open. And he has six points off the bench. The lead back up to 17. And a foul call against Wilson. The second. And right here, the read, and when I say he was committed totally to the one-handed slam and Pope going for the weak side rebound, he had curled into the lane, maybe a little slip pass. The guy's put in that one hand. It's just a dunk shot. Don't think of the possibility of a guy like Dampier Lomi. Countdown to the selection show continues. The brackets revealed here on CBS. Now 41 minutes. Every year seems to be more exciting, doesn't it? We've got so many teams this year sweating it out. These two know that they will be in. Kentucky will be a one seed. And the Midwest, where Catino thinks they're going to Milwaukee. Regardless, yes. they lose this one or not. More bubbles than Lawrence Welk, huh? <laughs> this year, a lot of late afternoon Navinas going on around the country for those on the edge. Heitch been very solid off the bench, giving them some minutes in the backcourt. And the key has been push it and then back it off so the double doesn't occur. He's protecting that base. He's hugged over. Using the clock. They got to get in their set, though. 1 4. 15 on the shot clock. Game clock almost down to eight minutes now. They're shortening the game. Walters, seven to shoot. Need a shot. Heisch. Dampier has to get rid of it. A rebound and then stripped by Wilson. McCarty lost it to Wilson. And they're so intent on fast breaking. Nice pilfer job by Wilson. He has 18. The lead 17. The lead 14. McCarty buries a three. Poise, poise. They keep coming at you with the pressure. Mississippi State has to be ready and with good location. They got a chance for a five here. Yep. They get it, John Clockerty. And a TV timeout. With 7.28 remaining, the Bulldogs still leading by 14. Well, the game summary reinforces what Mississippi State coach Richard Williams said yesterday. If you're going to beat Kentucky, your team has to have a very good or great game. Kentucky has to have a bad day. Mississippi State having that good game, shooting 57%. A career best performance by Dante Jones that not every Bulldog fan is excited about. And Antoine Walker had been the best player for Kentucky in the first two games of this tournament for much of the year, having an off day as are many of his mates. Fan obviously listening to our broadcast, by the way. But the one thing, if you take Kentucky and you don't get the turnovers, uh, cause those problems, they're not making the threes, all of a sudden they look vulnerable today, don't they? Not the inside game, even the guards aren't able to post up. Can I add the butt? Hope, uh, Pope rather, hoping for that to go in. And Walters the rebound. The butt is, you still get the feeling that this game is a long way from over because they are Kentucky and they are so explosive. Good poise against the pressure that time. They went zone on that particular trip, Kentucky. Walters playing with four fouls, gave it to Fuller. Heitch inside the damn gear that passes to Fleckman still made it there. And the shot clock goes down to seven. Heitch. Off of Heitch. Yep. Delt touched it, but then it hit Heitch and went out. And that's the 18th turnover committed by the Bulldogs. And Damper a little bit frustrated now because he's not able to do anything on offense. He's tired of giving it back out. 14-point game. The Kentucky fans on their feet trying to spur on their top-ranked team. Mercer. A lot of post-up guys, huh? Nice cut to the box, and they got the ball there on time. They got a chance here if they double. I wonder if Mississippi State is doing what Georgetown did last night. A little too early. Very conservative, very early against a very explosive team. Bullard might have gotten away with a clear out with a free arm. He missed the shot. McCarty the rebound. And Mercer out on the wing. Delta pull up for three. McCarty could not save it. 
And that's the kind of shot, Bill, when you're on a comeback trail. Uh, if you can keep the momentum, you knock down that three. And, and what they did is they had Mercer run into the box on that particular shot. But here's the post off, and Pope, who's so big outside, has the vision and the ability to deliver. And you got Jones on the wing here, and this is what they would like. But he's smart. He gives it right back up. He's not trying to force it today as he did in the earlier game. Press so difficult to figure out, as Richard Williams said yesterday. Kentucky has so many different types of pressure. And we're under six minutes remaining. 12-point lead for Mississippi State, trying to win their first ever SEC tournament title. They've only been in the finals twice with this appearance today. How about that matchup? McCarty out there with the hands, so Wilson can't get a look. Shot clock again all the way down. Hughes has to shoot it. Rebound by McCarty. I wonder if they're taking themselves out of their offensive flow with these long possessions. They are killing clock. Turner, clock goaltend. And here, hit it on the way down, and it's a 10-point game with 5.25 left. That's the magic number. The shorts get a little tighter, and right here, an easy call for the officials. That presence of Dan Beer lingering all game long. And now they got to be careful of the home run pass because Pope doesn't have to the foot speed maybe at that pier. They've been able to get away with it. They call timeout now, Sean. Timeout, Mississippi State. What was a 19-point lead is down to 10. And following the selection show, here is our lineup tonight on CBS. 60 minutes, followed by Sybil. Then Bonnie, and it's the 22nd Annual People's Choice Awards hosted by Brett Butler. That's all tonight on CBS. Each team with two full timeouts remaining. Neither has its 20. Mississippi State has already reached the limited team fouls. Well, Kentucky has committed five, and the arrow favors Mississippi State. You can sense now in a big way that momentum is sliding against the Bulldogs. You wonder if they'll go back to more of an attack mode when they have the chance. Well, I think they should, but you're also in that time Richard Williams going, relax, please, relax, get some good motion. What is it? And then he's trying to get the kids to relax, and you're as hyper as they are. And right here again, getting damp here to handle a key aspect. The big guys touching, it doesn't work as well for Richard Williams. Bear in mind, because it was deflected out, Mississippi State gets a new 10 seconds in the backcourt. Instead, they go to the home run pass. Wilson fell down and tried to get up, got it off to Hughes for an easy layup. It was shaky all the way, but they got two that they really needed. And Mississippi State leads by 12. We're down to five minutes remaining here in New Orleans. Hope trying to dominate Dampier. Oh, this is deep shot. Cardi missed the long three. Anderson missed with the left hand. Pope was fouled, and it spins in. Mark Pope has great work habits. I mean, anybody that likes basketball appreciates he gives the little things to this team. He's an unselfish player, doesn't need the ball all the time, occupied Dampier. All of a sudden, with Pope challenging, he kept the ball alive. Anderson, then it tracks Dampier, but Pope gets to the right spot and able to get it all. A lot of paint on that little crawler. And the foul is on Daryl Wilson, his third, the eighth against Mississippi State. More fouls, they'll be the double bonus. Kentucky would shoot two. On every foul the rest of the game. Pope missed the free throw, then came over the back of Wilson. And he just committed his fourth. Mark Pope, the senior from Bellevue, Washington. Jones back on the bench. I don't know if it's a physical problem or... I say emotional. Yep. This isn't the time for that. No, no. That's what it is. Well, that was a tough pass to catch for Bullard. And he stepped out of bounds. He's had that problem three times. He's inadvertently stepped out of bounds against the pressure. 19th turnover committed by Mississippi State. They have a chance to get it into single digits, the deficit facing the Wildcats. The analogy, you know, rating a race almost. Uh, they, the length of the game, the understanding to go 40, heavyweights. Agonizing weight now, less than an hour and a half for many teams around the country. Delt missed a runner. Delt kept it alive, but it got poked to Hughes. And he's looking for help. 
Gets it to Fuller. 4.25 remaining, Mississippi State by 10. Their largest lead was 19 on three different occasions, most recently with 15.24 left. Another turnover. McCarty, the pull-out. And Wilson, the rebound. And Kentucky squandering a lot of chances. That is deflected out of bounds by Kentucky. And MSU plays it in from right in front of the U.K. bench. And what a tough spot to inbounds if they really extend the pressure. Trappy more, the double fist. Early in the game, a lot of man-to-man. -man. If they didn't push the ball, stayed straight up. And look who they force it to, and, and they just couldn't shut off the return. Pullard guided tightly by Anderson. On the other shot clock. Still a 10-point game, but he hasn't been able to get it back into single digits. Shot clock 10. Jones still on the bench for the Bulldogs. Here's shot. Here's the tie-in. Puts a lot of stress on this. Bullard missed the three. McCarty the rebound. And the game clock shows three and a half minutes remaining. In the Pope. Out to McCarty. The pull-up. Battle for the rebound won by Wilson. He is triple teamed and fouled. About the little guy coming up with two major rebounds and he wouldn't give it up. They were swiping away. And fatigue maybe on McCarty on those last two looks. Really didn't stroke the basketball. Kentucky's also playing for the third straight day. They're a deeper team. They're fatigued, unquestionably. Well, regardless of the outcome, Bill, this air of inevitability surrounding Kentucky's national championship and it has been eliminated by this game. There are a lot of teams out there now that say, hey. Oh, it's wide open, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, you, you, as a coach, your job is to take things away from the team you're playing against. And Richard Williams, the analysis of the press has been superior. Didn't turn it over with the regularity of the last game. And Dampier unselfish. Even though the number, what, two for 11 we had earlier, he was giving it up out of that double and letting the others beat him, and particularly Jones at a sensational beginning. Time running out of the Wildcats. And perhaps on the longest winning streak in college basketball this season, their 27-game winning streak, the longest by any team in the nation this year. Delk, a miss. Walters had the rebound and was fouled by either Anderson or Delk. Jumper's not going. You're not getting that easy goal and press set up. Might be an opportunity to dump it low or use the dribble drive a little bit. Stick with the deuces. I mean, they've got to assert pressure with their offense. Go to the final four. Pat O'Brien, Quinn Buck right here on CBS. And not a rebounder in the group. Grab was strictly a fold who liked to punish you with the jumper. For, for the teams on the bubble watching this game, that clock doesn't seem as if it's moving. An hour and 24 minutes. Walters makes it a 13-point game. Three minutes left. Quick hitters you're looking for. You're looking strictly for the three. I think you should go to the goal a little bit. Interesting, they got two quick fouls on Dampier. Never could take advantage of it. That is a three-pointer and a chance for four. Wow, what a mistake. You're holding the hammer. Close out. And Richard turns to the staff and says, why? And as you're closing out, but always under control, little contact after the release. And Marcus Bullard in disbelief looking on. Anthony Epps with a chance for a four-point play. The foul was the third on Bullard. Epps going to the line for the Wildcats. Ninth team foul on State. Kentucky's been called for eight. Now, Rick Pitino hasn't gone to Walker or Mercer in the last few minutes. They have not seen the floor. Walker particularly going with speed and the, the pressure kind of guys. They cause the timeout. Rick's looking for the five-second count. Well, the deficit facing Kentucky now is into the single digits. Nine down with 2.45 remaining. Find your own road. Bud Light. With Bill Raftery, Sean McDonough back at the Louisiana Superdome in New Orleans. The SEC Championship game. Mississippi State led throughout the second half by as much as 19. 
Now leading by nine and down to one timeout left. The arrow's still in their favor. 2.45 remaining. Bullard, Wilson, Dante Jones, Hughes, and Dan Pier on the floor for MSU. So Jones is back and playing again. And it's Anderson, McCarty, Delt, Epps, and Edwards. Quick lineup on the floor for UK. And it's that home run uh, set. Dampier's got one. Jones is out there as well. So they got to be careful in the backcourt. And they hit down to a tough place. Right where the Kentucky can trap, and they do. The pass got to Hughes. Back to Bullard. Now, this is the set. Now, I think they got to run something at least with 15 to go. Get into their offense. A violation. Yep. Backcourt, Bullard lost the dribble, and it rolled into the backcourt. So Kentucky gets the ball down nine with 2.27 left. And right here, you got good control. It's just switching from one to the other. <laughs> Critical <laughs> juncture, major <laughs> miscue. I think it's hard to coach. Oh. Delt for three. Jones got a hand on the rebound. It was batted out by Anderson. Mississippi State's ball with 2.18 left. See how much harder it is to settle for three instead of going inside and then kick out or push the ball and get the three. That's why Kentucky, I think, is going to loosen up with the bounce. Take the two. They're back in this in this nine-point deficit. For those who haven't seen Kentucky lately, they might have the vision of Rick Pitino's team as that three-point shooting team almost exclusively from a few years ago. But as they've gotten better players inside, they've gotten away from being so reliant on the three until the second half today. Well, they can beat you in a lot of ways, is what you're saying. And that time, a little giveaway by Edwards on Damp here. And uh, not a bad thought. The Jimmy Valvano school, you know, give it up, put him on the line. He's a 62% free throw shooter. Ninth team foul. Each team called for nine now. So he's a double bonus the rest of the way after this trip by Damp here. Just a 62% free throw shooter. At the line with his team up by 9, 208 remaining. Think he's over 10 seconds there? Very close to it. That could be part of the reason. You, know, you let everything tighten up. Pull that string at the end. Bend the knees, big fella. And there's, there's the two offensively that have not been playing. Whether it's uh, the design to be able to pressure with the smaller lineup or for some other reason. It's almost like Alonzo Mourning. I had him at nine on a very slow count. Is oh, that's a New England count. Yes. Got to quicken it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so they tabulate folks up there. 11 point game, two minutes left. McCarty out of the corner. Might have been deflected by Dante Jones. Out of bounds. Last touch by Kentucky. Anderson came down hard. Holding his arm right now. And cracked his funny bone off the floor there as he's grabbing in his right elbow. Good hustle on this play by Derrick. Unfortunately, a lot of bodies, one underneath him, and just to play on. Ooh, that did look worse than it was, huh? He's gone to the bench. Allen Edwards back in. Mississippi State getting closer to the big upset. Up by 11, under two minutes remaining. San Jose State wins the Big West in overtime over Utah State. They spread the floor a little bit now. Forcing Kentucky to expend a lot of energy. Not as quick right now as they normally are. Not up on guys, down to 10 without anything though. See, this is going to be a tough little... Jones. What was he oh. single for? Is he <laughs> <gonna go? laughs> they need a shot though. Hey, you look like McCarthy. Oh, it's been that kind of a day. <laughs> With the <laughs> shot clock expiring, awkward shot thrown up by Hughes, and he made it. Well, that's what you need to be the great team. A point guard at six foot eight, signaling a play they don't have. <laughs> Either that or just pointing to the sky uh, briefly. I shall return. Uh, the pass. And check the shot clock out, Sean. He definitely got yeah, it off. Yeah, the kiss. One to remember, to be remembered in Bulldog history. Number 25, Four, this 
Mississippi State arrived here in New Orleans for this SEC championship. Their record all time in the SEC tournament was 8 and 35. They're about to win their third straight. Had only eight in the entire history of this event. This three down on their side, huh? Have never won it, as we said, only in the final once in the first year back in 1933. Well, Kentucky has won more SEC tournament championships than any other school. And not trying to stop the clock here, not giving it away. Uh, a week to prepare. I would think Rick Pitino, who loves to coach, not real happy with this performance. Uh, something went awry, I think, with Antoine Walker. Mercer back in, and they finally give it away with 14 to go. So not giving it right away and I, I think he asked they didn't consider didn't perform to give the foul earlier and that's what he was saying why would you wait till now yeah, foul number three Rick was saying Marcus Bullard executive producer for CBS Sports is Rick Gentile the coordinating producer of NCAA basketball is Bob Degas today's game produced by Bob Monsbach and directed by Mike Arnold the coordinating producer of the road to the final four is Eric Mann at the half was directed by Bob Matina the associate director of today's game, Ken Mack. And Wilson has his free throw rattle out, but his team is still up 11 with 50.7 seconds left. Kentucky's won 38 SEC tournament championships, more than the other teams in the league combined. Mississippi State appears to be about to win its first ever in a huge upset. And not another mistake, huh? Yeah, boy, Kentucky really sleepwalking now it'll be interesting to see Bill how they bounce back undoubtedly they'll still be a, a top seed but as we said earlier that sense that many people had that it was just a matter of whoops, six games in the NCAA tournament give Rick his much anticipated first championship ring and let him and everybody else will throw that's the right the everybody ring. else will try and uh, that's not the case uh, Mississippi State has proven Kentucky can be defeated. They may have more bite now because of this loss. And I'm sure that's what they'll be considering. Uh, Mike Arnold took a shot of the shot combo of Wilson. And, and to both of us, he said it's style. Well, this guy's in style. And Mississippi State, maybe a good look on him. Looks like Curry Kittle's high sock. The counter for style. Stockville style. <laughs> He has 22, Darrell Wilson. Senior from Kennedy, Alabama. Under 40 seconds left. Wayne Turner missed a runner. Wilson listed at 6-1, and that's probably generous with another rebound. He's had several big rebounds in the second half. Not only is Mississippi State going to win, they're going to win with a very comfortable margin. Richard Williams, the MSU grad, brings his school its first ever. SEC tournament title. This is a score that will shock people when it goes across on the crawl. He had uh, just, what, 15 hours to prepare and do some things. Uh, Well-deserved applause. Well, this is a team, no matter where they go and who they play, they're going to be tough. They have an excellent starting five, as we've seen. Uh, very talented nucleus with Dan Pierre, Bullard, Wilson, Jones in particular. Four players who average 13 points per game or better. And as you said, Rick Latino will use this to oh, cool. his advantage. Say, okay, you guys can listen. Everybody tell you how good you are, and it's just a matter of time before you win the championship. Well, you're not as good as you think you are, and you better start getting back to the business of life. Eastern time. You know, uh, you went to bed early. I just wanted to check the sights out. Listen, I don't think I saw anybody that thought this would happen. No. Just everybody believe me. Kentucky, and I, and I think their players did too. A little fat. Uh, the win early in the year. They beat them so badly down there. Uh, not ready, but strictly a wonderful coaching performance and preparation by Richard Williams and his guys. Extraordinary. Well, yesterday, Richard Williams called Rick Pitino and the Kentucky Wildcats special. And this is a very special win for the coach and his jubilant band, the Bulldogs, from Starkville, Mississippi. They have given Mississippi State its first ever SEC Tournament Championship. Meanwhile, Antoine Walker and the Wildcats will try to regroup 
For the NCAA tournament upcoming, you saw Larry Templeton, the athletic director, with his arm around Coach Williams. The Chevrolet players of the game, Dante Jones, who was also selected as the SEC Tournament Most Valuable Player. Career high 28 points today, and Walter McCarty of Kentucky had 15. Steve Hamer of Tennessee, Walter McCarty, Antoine Walker, and Daryl Wilson, the others on the all-tournament team. And Dante Jones of Mississippi State is the very happy MVP of the tournament. Now for Bill Raftery, Pat O'Brien, Clint Buckner, and George Raveling. Sean McDonough saying so long from the Superdome. The final score, Mississippi State 84 and Kentucky 73. Coming up next, it's the road to the Final Four with the latest tournament news, then live at 6.30, home of the NCAA Basketball Championship.